As I make this video live, Apple will have just released watchOS 26 to the public. And like most years, watchOS does tend to be one of the less exciting updates compared to the big overhauls that we see with iOS or the improvements that bring iPadOS even closer to feeling like a Mac. That said, there are some genuinely interesting changes this year. Not flashy headline features, but solid quality of life improvements that you might not even notice straight away. And that's why I've put this video together. These are the things that I think that you should try first when you update your watch to watchOS 26. Okay, let's get into it. Before we get too far into the video, a quick word on compatibility. This is always a little bit confusing with the Apple Watch because while the software itself has a fairly broad compatibility list, some of the features still depend on having a paired iPhone that supports Apple intelligence and others are limited to certain watch models like the new gestures, for example. I'll flag throughout the video if a feature is specific to a particular watch, but in general, for watchOS 26, you'll need an Apple Watch SE second generation or newer, an Apple Watch Series 6 or newer, or any model of the Apple Watch Ultra, whether that's the original, the Ultra 2, or the new Ultra 3. You'll also need an iPhone 11 or later, or an iPhone SE second generation or later, since you need a phone that can run iOS 26. So there are two things to keep in mind this year, your watch needs to be compatible with watchOS 26, and your iPhone needs to be compatible with iOS 26. As for updating, most people will get a prompt automatically. If you don't, just open the watch app on your paired iPhone, tap my watch at the bottom, then go to general software update. From there, choose watchOS 26, follow the steps, and you'll be good to go. The watch has had a visual overhaul, just like all of Apple's operating systems this year, although I can't help but feel like the team behind the watchOS redesign probably got to leave early on a Friday because there really isn't a huge amount to show here. You do notice it in places like the lock screen and control center, but I'm not surprised Apple didn't spend much time on it during the WWDC keynote this year. For the most part, the differences are subtle. You'll spot it in some of the new font choices and on a few of the new watch faces, especially with the way that the clock is displayed. But if you're expecting a dramatic night and day change between watchOS 26 and the previous version, I would temper those expectations. It does look good and it works really well on the small watch face, but overall it is very similar to what we had before. Speaking of redesigns, the workout app has had a complete overhaul and it's now much easier to navigate and set up exactly how you like it. When you open the app, you can scroll through the list of workouts using the digital crown. Once you find the one that you want, you don't need to dive into multiple menus straight away. Instead, five buttons appear on screen. The play button at the bottom will start your workout and there are four buttons, one in each corner. In the top left, you'll see workout views. This is where you can choose which metrics are displayed during your workout with several predefined options available. If you tap the little pencil icon, you can customize them even further. So if the default views show data you don't care about, this is where you can change it. In the top right, you've got goals and targets. This lets you set things like the distance you want to run, how long you plan to work out for, or the number of kilo calories you'd like to burn. The bottom right is for notifications, where you can set alerts to pop up while you're exercising. And if you've got a supported Apple Watch, this is also where you'll find Workout Buddy, which I'll come to in a moment. Finally, in the bottom left, there is an option for autoplay media. This lets your workout automatically play content in the background based on what you're doing and your listening history. There have been rumors for a while now about Apple adding artificial intelligence to the health app to create an AI powered health coach. And I think we've taken the first real step towards that this year with the introduction of Workout Buddy in watchOS 26, an AI fitness coach. The way that it works is that your watch pairs with an Apple intelligence compatible iPhone. So that's the iPhone 15 Pro, any of the iPhone 16 range, or the upcoming iPhone 17 range, and combines Apple intelligence with all of the real-time workout data that your watch is already tracking. So that could be your running pace, heart rate, workout intensity, and more. Using that information, it gives you coaching and encouragement as you go. In Apple's demo at WWDC, as soon as someone went out for a run, Workout Buddy gave them a little boost of encouragement, reminded them that it was their second run of the week, and suggested that they use it as a chance to close their rings. If you're struggling near the end of a workout, it can recognize that and give you a push to keep going. The voice is dynamically generated from Fitness Plus trainer voices, so it sounds energetic and human, and you can even pick the trainer that you'd like. 
by default, Workout Buddy is switched off and you opt in per workout type. When you open the workout app, tap the little bell icon in the bottom right and you'll see an option that says Workout Buddy off. Switch that to on for the workout that you want and it will be enabled. It's a clever idea and if you're someone who responds well to words of encouragement during a run or workout, this could be a feature worth trying out. By the way, if you have an Apple Watch, you probably also have an iPhone. And if you do, you should definitely check out iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my dedicated training portal for the iPhone. More than 150 lessons with more content on the way. It's broken down into modules, with each one covering a different part of your iPhone. Inside each module, you'll find lessons. And every lesson comes with a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can go through everything at your own pace or just use the search tool to jump straight to the thing that you're trying to figure out. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single price, no ongoing subscription. That one-time purchase also includes all future updates, including the all-important iOS 26 update, which is already being rolled out. And if you've got a Mac, I recently launched Mac Essentials Plus as well. It works exactly the same way, just for your Mac instead. You can buy either one on its own, or you can bundle the two together for the best possible price. If that sounds good to you, scan the QR code you can see on screen or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. You should take a moment to check out Control Center on your watch because Apple has just opened up the Control Widget API to developers. This means that third-party developers can now create widgets that appear in Control Center. Previously, this was limited to Apple's own apps, but with more developers creating for the Apple Watch, This opens up some exciting new possibilities. To try it out, press the side button to open Control Center, then scroll to the bottom and tap Edit. In Edit Mode, you'll see a plus button in the top left corner. Tap that and you'll get suggested widgets that your watch thinks you might want to add. Below that is the All Controls section, where you can choose from everything currently available. Most of these are still first-party options, but if you scroll right down, you'll see a From Your iPhone section And that's where you can start adding supported widgets from third-party apps. It is a little empty right now, but this is one to watch as developers begin adding more options. And just as a reminder, when you're editing Control Center, you can use the minus button to remove things that you don't want, drag items to rearrange them, and then tap Done at the bottom to confirm your changes. Apple has added some really useful call features in iOS 26. And even though you might not take calls directly from your watch, there is a good chance that you use it to screen calls and decide whether or not to take them. That means that you'll still benefit from these updates. The first feature is call screening. This happens on your iPhone, but you'll get notified about it on your connected watch. When a call comes in from an unknown number, your iPhone will silently answer in the background and ask the caller for their name and reason for calling. Your phone then shows you that information so you can decide to accept or decline. And with watchOS 26, Those details also show on your watch, giving you an easy way to make the decision from your wrist. The other big improvement is hold assist. If your phone recognizes that you've been put on hold, it will prompt you to let the phone manage the hold cue for you. When it detects that someone has picked up, it asks them to hold while it alerts you, showing how long you've been on hold for and giving you the chance to pick up when you're ready. On the watch, this shows as a smart stack widget, so you can keep an eye on it while you get on with other things. The setup for both features is on your iPhone. Go to Settings, scroll down and choose Apps, then choose Phone. In there, you'll see a section called Screen Unknown Callers. This is where you can enable the Ask Reason for Calling option. Just above that, you'll also see the Toggle for Hold Assist Detection, which you'll need to turn on if you want to use the Hold Assist feature. The Smart Stack on the Apple Watch is actually one of those features that I've been using a lot over the past year. If you're unfamiliar with it, you bring it up by rotating the digital crown upward slightly, and it shows you a stack of information, otherwise known as the smart stack. You can scroll through all of these glanceable cards, and if you tap the edit button at the bottom, you can choose what you'd like to include or exclude. It works really well because it gives you more information than you can fit into complications, but without needing to open a dedicated app. A practical example for me is when I'm cooking. If I set a timer, rather than having that as a complication on my watch face, I can just scroll up into the smart stack and see straight away how much time is left. In watchOS 26, the smart stack has also been redesigned with a new prediction algorithm, so it's better at showing you the information that you're likely to want. At WWDC, 
Apple showed someone arriving at the gym and their watch gave them a prompt to start a workout. When they opened the smart stack, the workout card was already at the top. In my timer example, it works the same way. The watch knows if I've got one running, so it puts that at the top for me automatically. It's one of those features that you don't really need to configure much, and I can't really show you how to use it. You'll just find yourself using it more and more the longer that you have your watch. The main thing is just getting into the habit of scrolling into the smart stack in the first place. The watch face gallery has had a complete redesign, and the best place to see it is actually in the watch app on the iPhone. If you open the watch app and tap on face gallery at the bottom, you'll now see that the faces are grouped into categories. It makes it much quicker to find the type of watch face that you're after. So if you know that you want something with analog time or a colorful face, or maybe something more dressy or one that uses photos or even just the newest faces that have been added, you can jump straight into the right category. And if you'd prefer to just browse everything visually, there's still a see or watch faces button at the bottom that gives you the full list. Apple has given you more reason not to just leave your watch in silent mode with the addition of automatic speaker volume adjustment in watchOS 26. The idea is simple. As long as your watch isn't in silent mode, watchOS 26 will automatically raise or lower the volume for Siri, calls and notification chimes based on the ambient noise around you. So for example, if I'm working in my office and it's quiet, the alerts on my watch will play quietly because it knows that they don't need to be loud. But if I'm out in a noisy, windy environment walking the dog and I answer a call, the watch will automatically boost the volume so I can hear the other person without having to fiddle with controls myself. It's another one of those small but really useful quality of life improvements that you don't need to configure. As long as your watch supports watchOS 26, you'll get this automatically. Just make sure that your watch isn't in silent mode for it to work. In recent years, Apple has added gestures to the watch like covering the display to mute or the double tap where you tap your index finger and thumb together to answer calls, reply to messages, scroll through the smart stack and more. Now, if you have a compatible device, that's the same ones that support double tap, so the Series 9 or newer or the Ultra 2 or newer, there is another gesture to add to the list, the wrist flick. The idea is simple. When you get a notification, an alarm goes off or something similar, you can just flick your wrist away from you and the watch will return straight to the home screen without needing to press the digital crown with your other hand. It uses the watch's accelerometer and gyroscope combined with machine learning to recognize the flick motion, and it is genuinely useful. I found myself using it a lot recently. You don't need to set anything up for this. It should just work straight away on supported models. If it doesn't, make sure that your watch is updated and also check that you don't have any conflicting assistive touch gestures enabled. To do that, Go to Settings, then Accessibility, and then look in the Motor section. The Notes app has finally come to the Apple Watch, and how excited you are about that probably depends on how often you think you'll want to use a Notes app on a tiny screen, mostly with voice dictation. But it is something that people have been asking for for a long time, so it's good that Apple has finally added it. When you open the app, you'll see all of your existing notes, although the layout is different to fit the smaller display. Instead of browsing by folders like you can on the iPhone or Mac, the watch groups things into sections. You'll see pinned notes first, pulled in from across all of your folders, then notes created today or yesterday, then notes from the past seven days, then the past 30, and after that, they're grouped by month. There isn't a search option as far as I can tell, so you just scroll to what you need. The assumption here seems to be that you're most likely to be working with notes that you've created recently. You can also create a new note from scratch. Tap the new note button in the bottom right corner and then either use the tiny on-screen keyboard or more realistically, Siri to dictate it. Once saved, it will appear in the today section on your watch and thanks to iCloud, it will also sync straight across to your other devices. It's definitely good that Notes is finally available on the watch, even if I suspect it is something that most people won't use very often. Personally, if I'm out and about, and I need to quickly jot something down, I'm more likely to record a voice memo than create a written note on my wrist. But if you've been working on something recently and you just want a quick way to glance at it on your watch, at least now you've got that option. Apple has added a few nice quality of life improvements to the Messages app on the watch. First, if you're using the new backgrounds feature in Messages on your iPhone, any backgrounds that you've set for your chats will now carry over to the watch as well. It's not a huge change, but it looks good. And if you use backgrounds as a quick way to identify different conversations, 
it is helpful that they're consistent across devices. The more interesting addition is polls. This lets you create a multiple choice question in a group chat that everyone can vote on. On the Apple Watch, polls show up as simple buttons right on the screen. You just tap the option that you want to vote for. It makes the whole process really quick and easy, and you can even see a live tally of which choice is in the lead. So there you go. Those are the features that I think you should check out first when you update your Apple Watch to watchOS 26. Like I said at the start, it isn't exactly a groundbreaking update for the watch, especially compared to iOS 26 or iPadOS 26. But even so, I think there are a number of changes here that will have a meaningful impact. They're not things that I'll necessarily spend a lot of time using, but they're the kind of quality of life improvements that make the watch more useful day to day. What about you? Is there anything Apple has added in watchOS 26 that you're enjoying that I haven't covered here? Or something you were hoping for that still hasn't arrived? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.